Well, there's someone new in the Pressman Auto dealership, and it's causing me heartache. So, back in the day, Honda wanted to make a big stink in the automotive field. They wanted to build a performance car, but, you know, who does that? They reached out to a guy named Gordon Murray and the Honda design team. If you see who's next to him, that's Senna. We'll get to him in a minute. Senna and Murray worked together at McLaren in, you know, the early 90s. Helped Senna get a driving champion. And then there's Senna with his NSX. So we're, we're, we're jumping the shark, but we'll go back to, to you see, there's the McLaren MP4, you know, with, with Proust and Senna winning at F1. If you don't know who Gordon Murray is or who Senna is, you're doing car fandom wrong. Gordon Murray is a South African-born English guy who <laughs> designed cars for a lot of different F1 companies, but a lot of time with McLaren and McLaren road cars. This is his F1, and this is the swan song of cars for me. Mid-1994, 595 Matt, this was like finding a dirty picture in the bathroom. It was lusted over by everyone who liked cars in my age group, I think to this day. And if you don't have, you know, thirty-five, forty thousand dollars to maintain your F1 or a mustache like Gordon Murray did, then I highly suggest you pick up the Acura NSX. Now the NSX is a lot of firsts, but first of all, it's like Pin and Farina got jumped on its way to school and all of its lunch money was stolen. It's like Ferrari was told that you can build something reliable. In 1989, Honda just shook up the motor world and said, look, we can build a car and it will start and it'll be okay. And you don't have to have it come from Italy and it doesn't have to be German and Teutonic. It can be beautiful and weird and Japanese and lovely and maiden. This is a 2002 NA2 NSX. Now, what we lose here is a three liter Vortec or VTEC V6 and a 3.2 liter, which is great. We also lose the pop-up headlights, but for losing pop-up headlights, we get a few things. I really wanna point out the lines on this car. It is phenomenal. It looks brilliant. It drives brilliant. This is the third one I've driven in so many years. Six speed manual transmission, super well balanced. And like I said, a lot of firsts with Acura and Honda. You know, all aluminum body, balanced suspension. Senna, the F1 driver, would take it out of the track and tell him what to change and how to make it faster. Gordon Murray helped with the design. So as I said earlier, you did lose that 3.0. It moved to a 3.2 engine, which was the N type. You got a bigger piston, so it went from 90 to 93 millimeters anyway, and some titanium rods and such. But they got it up to 290 horsepower. Now this is where the NSX falls down. It looks brilliant, it, it goes great, but in, in the real world, you know, Porsche and, Flor and Ferrari would eat its lunch and it needed more power, it needed better brakes, needed a better braking system. Those steel brakes, they fade on you pretty fast. And you have to be really mindful of the power as you're going into corners. Now that's just me driving and I'm kind of a schlub. But I would say that pound for pound, you've got a great performance car and you didn't have to pay the maintenance fees of other places. Now we didn't get the best NSX here in America. We never got the, the R-type version with you know the carbon fiber hood. But man, they, you know, they were all right-hand drive. I, I think a few of them are coming into country nowadays, but what we settle with are these examples. And I, I'm stymied by how beautiful and how lovely they are. I remember reading the press and seeing these things as a kid, you know, a teenager, and having pictures of this up on my wall. And now I'm expected to work all day and have it sit next to me. Regardless, do yourself a favor, go watch the Senate documentary, go do a little research on the F1 and Gordon Murray and why they're so important to car culture and driving in general. And then maybe go out and see if you can find an NSX. See if you can look around at them. Recently, there's been this big move towards retro riding the old cars. You know, you have the new version of the NSX, which is kind of a poor imposter, or a new version of the Supra, which is a poor imposter. I've driven them both many times. And they just are pretenders to the crown. These originals have that verb, that vibe, that feel that you just don't get from, you know, the anhedonic current model versions and they're great they're all-wheel drive but they're bloated and you can see that the design language is driven by accountants and safety features rather than by raw power and crazy 
F1 drivers that are gonna push things to the ragged edge. And that's what you get with this NSX, is that push to power, wackiness, craziness, all with Honda reliability, which again, is a weird thing. But they're so cool and they're so beautiful and I love them dearly. Now, as Ferris Bueller said, they're choice. And if you have the means, I highly suggest you pick one up. This one is not yet for sale. It is on the floor and who knows what's gonna happen with it. It'll be the third one that have, has come through the dealership and maybe been sold to a private party, maybe kept in a garage, maybe stored somewhere else. But if it is up on the market, I will let my YouTube folks know and we can talk more about it. But until then, do yourself a favor. The Top Gear documentary on Senna, go and find out who Gordon Murray was and why he was so important to F1 racing in the 1990s and those huge Honda powerhouse engines. And go see if you can take a drive today in any car. Enjoy the weather, enjoy your friend, enjoy your life. But if you do need a car, come down and see me here at Pressman Auto. This is Matt signing off. And I hope you have a fabulous day and you've appreciated the nonsense that is this NSX that has been distracting me for the last week because it's ruining my productivity. So I had to do something about it. And the video, you know, it followed. Again, Matt with Pressman Auto. Accurate NSX's rule. I guess there are Hondas everywhere else in the world because America is weird and can't handle Honda being a cool brand.